Hi, I am Justin McClure with Daffler Heating and Cooling. Today's presentation is going to focus on solar and geothermal for the new or existing home. We're going to start by defining solar. And for our purposes of today, we're going to define solar as solar power is the energy that is derived from the sun and converted into heat or electricity. There are two types of uh, solar applications that we're going to talk about, the first being photovoltaic, or a lot of people will call it uh, PV. And the second will be solar thermal or concentrated solar. So what is photovoltaic? Photovoltaic or PV are photoelectric applications, use of the photovoltaic cells in converting energy from the sun into electricity. Great example of this is the uh, common calculator that we all probably have at, at our homes. It's harnessing that daylight energy to provide the means of uh, a calculator. Whereas solar thermal or concentrated thermal is the means of gathering solar energy distinct from the use of photovoltaic panels and instead of directly converting solar energy into electricity as in the PV panels we just talked about, concentrated solar concentrates the sunlight onto a relatively small point which heats a medium. In easier or layman terms, solar thermal or concentrated thermal is taking the sun's energy and transferring that into water or glycol to provide domestic hot water or space heating hot water. Whereas PV, if we recap that, PV is taking the sun's energy and converting that into electricity. So two distinct types of solar we're talking about today, one being PV or the means of sun energy into electricity, and two being solar thermal, taking the sun's en energy and concentrating that into a medium, which for our purposes will usually be hot water or water or glycol, which is a combination of water and alcohol. Within that, within the means of solar thermal, we are going to talk about three, three types today. Solar temperature um, over three mediums, which is low, medium, and high temperature. Under the category of solar thermal or solar concentrated, you can have three types. You can have low temperature devices. Those can be defined as spa or pool heating devices. So that's harnessing the sun's energy to heat up your pool or your spa. That would be a low temperature device. Then there's a medium temperature device. Medium temperature devices are what probably uh, we're going to see most commonly used because of the stimulus dollars or the federal tax credits. And that's the means of taking the sun's energy to heat our domestic hot water and or heat our homes. That would be considered a medium temperature solar device. And then a high temperature solar device is the means of using high temperature, actually converting the water into steam, and then providing a portion of electricity. So recapping three types of solar thermal, there's low temperature devices, there's medium temperature devices, and there's high temperature devices. What are some advantages of solar? Some are common, some you might not think of, but uh, the first one that we're going to think of is renewable and green energy. It's a green, clean type energy that we don't need to provide any flues or byproduct of carbon offsetting to provide our heating needs. It's a non-polluting during energy generation. It's potentially self-sustainable. I like to think of that self-sustainable on a bell curve from the standpoint of we have the ability to make your home completely self-sufficient. We can take you off the grid, essentially. I like to use that analogy of a bell curve because most people aren't going to make their home completely self-sufficient through the means of solar energy and then harnessing that into batteries, but we'll find some hybrid middle ground that we can provide a portion of our needs while lowering the upfront investment. If you have an upfront investment, you want a return on that investment. And the means of getting that return on investment is one we're looking at right now is the federal tax credit. Can you get 30% of that investment back through the means of a tax credit? Yes, you can. How do we get that other 70% of the investment back? Well, one of the cool things is net metering or smart metering. It's the ability to change the technology in your home, the electric meter in your home, into a device that allows the system to gather or monitor the amount of solar energy you're, you're getting and using. 
So an example of this would be is you make an investment into a solar system, a PV solar system. So we're going to take the sun's energy and harness it and turn it into electricity. You're at work during the day, so you're actually gathering more solar energy than what you're needing to use. So what we're going to do with that then through net metering and the, the combination of utilizing or talking with the, the utility company is we're going to feed the, the energy back into the grid system. So there's three parties that got to be involved. You, the homeowner, have to be involved to the, the company that's providing you the technology or the infrastructure for your solar system and then your utility because we want the utility to support what you're actually doing. We want the ability that if you're not using the sun's energy through the means of electricity, that we can push this back into the grid system and they can provide you a credit on your utility bill and or compensate you for a percentage of the sun energy, the solar energy that feeds back into the system, which helps provide an offset to that upfront investment. So again, there's the potential to make you money through PV solar if the communication with the utility company is bridged and we're able to feed that energy back into the grid system. We've talked about government incentives. And then the, another advantage of solar is just low maintenance. Once the uh, panels are, are put onto the roof, there's very little maintenance other than keeping those panels clean to maintain and optimize the efficiency of the panels. There's not much maintenance that you'll have with these systems. One thing I'd like to do through this uh, presentation is, uh, you know, what is a solar investment going to be? And I got to throw my disclaimer in here. Uh, I'm going to provide some, some solar investment ranges that uh, for residential um, uses only, and there's many variables that come into play. So that's kind of just my disclaimer here. But for solar thermal systems, again, harnessing the sun's energy to provide hot water or domestic space heating, you're looking at somewhere between $8,000 and $40,000. For PV solar, again, we're harnessing the sun's energy to provide electricity. PV can range anywhere between $20,000 and $250,000. Again, there's a pretty large range there, and the high end is, is a pretty large investment. That's why I come back to that bell curve. Most times, we're not going to make the top end investment to get ourselves completely self-sufficient. We're going to balance our, our utility upfront investment with the utility needs we have to find a hybrid type system so that it meets an upfront investment while meeting some of our long-term utility needs. Uh, one thing that w I'd like to provide is the federal tax credit uh, link here. I've pr just provided a URL to the IRS uh, 5695 form. This has just changed here in February uh, 2009, probably will continue to change. But the cap on solar and geothermal, which we'll jump in here in a little bit, has been lifted. It used to be that you received a 30% tax credit but it was capped at $2,000. That has been lifted. So regardless of your upfront investment, you're going to receive a federal tax credit. And if that can't all be taken in the first year, it can be carried forward through 2016. So if for some reason, whether it's income level um, or whether it's you've had other credits to take advantage of, we want to make sure you can get the full tax credit, or the full 30% of your solar investment. So we're going to be able to carry that forward through 2016. And that's a way that we're going to be able to show a return on an investment that this infrastructure that you invested in, that you're going to be able to get that investment back over a period of time.